two things have put Robinson in the spotlight. He allegedly hired a Chicago street gang to commit the murder, and he is the half-brother of Jesse Jackson. During his eighth day in court, Noah Robinson had a small victory in his capital murder case. The court ruled evidence taken during a search of Robinson's Chicago home should never be seen by jurors. Judge James Moore called the seizure unlawful. Evidence jurors won't be shown includes a weapon, a drug enforcement agency document, and names of gang members found taped to Robinson's apartment wall. XL Rukin gang member Jackie Clay testified today. He revealed 20 years of El Rukin experience, telling jurors in order to come up in rank. The appeal can be plans to continue through Saturday. Robinson and his lawyers spent the morning presenting several. A jury of 11 whites and one black listened intently as a member of a Chicago street gang testified that he was paid $500 to plan Barber's murder. But Judge James D. Moore considered the motion, but decided not to move the trial. However, he says he might change his mind if it becomes. Motions. The judge decided to allow Robinson to be... Robinson's lawyers made the first move by asking that the trial be moved to Charleston County because of pre-trial publicity. Greenville lawyer Albert Taylor presented tapes and newspaper articles to support... And uh, when you look at that, apparently you see he's free now who's already served 10 years for another murder, is a member of a Chicago street gang called the El Rukins. He says a cocaine dealer said she heard Robinson threaten Barber. But Robinson supporters say the prosecution's case relies too heavily on testimony from convicted criminals seeking lenient sentences. Solicitor Joe Watson, meanwhile, defended himself against claims that he instigated much of the publicity, claiming it was Robinson who contacted the news media. I don't think anybody looks forward to coming back. Prosecutors, in exchange for testing, the well, money will be spent. Everyone has them. They've taken these seats, and the second time this medical malpractice suit has come before the civil superior court. Last December, this malpractice trial came to an abrupt, surprising stop when three days of court testimony and documents we argued that doctors were negligent in her care because she was left alone with a nurse for 12 minutes while the anesthesia was administered. The defendants, doc, the defendants, who are doctors John Bell and James Lutz, testified that Featherstone asked for general anesthesia. They say that she died because she was overweight. Glad for everyone's sake that this is all over. And that it was because we knew we had done nothing wrong. Both of the doctors, I love them. They made a mistake, but if they, got to, if they can live with it, I can. I really can. I love them from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, ain't no hate nowhere. No hate nowhere.